As you can hear, there's a lot of rain right now. This is the first big rain we've had this year. And uh, it's been eventful, that's for sure. Today has been an experience. One of those days on a boat where you're like, that was a lot, but it seems to have turned out okay. So, just a normal Saturday this morning, went to the market and got all the fresh food and vegetables, came back, sunshine, it was actually kind of shaping up to be a nice day, but then the rain set in. And this turned into like the heaviest rain that we've had coming into this year's hurricane season. Shovel all of that without getting that to here. I was inside just playing on my phone. Trent and Tyner were down in the office, and we just hear a bang. Holy shit! Oh. Now we got shells are breaking. What did it hit? With my knife in hand, I ran up the side of the deck to the front of the boat. When I got to the front, I could just see the broken wood and this massive bulge of water. So I just started stabbing it because in my head, I needed to put holes in it to drain it. But I also was careful about how I was stabbing it, as, as weird as that sounds, because I didn't want to put too many holes in because in my brain, we could fix it later. And then as I'm kind of sitting and watching, I just had Trent come up behind me and he has this tool in his hand which we used a few weeks ago to remove the helm seat and he just stabbed straight into it and the water just dumped. Watching the water pour out of here, I straight away went, yeah, I should have sliced that because that's a lot of water. And as we were standing there watching it pour out, we were just watching this bar of the shelter just raise back up. Because this, this beam here was about here that we saw. I don't think it touched the solar panel because there's no marks, but it was, it was pretty close. Once we had it all up, then it was kind of, let's deal with the collateral damage of the water collecting. There were broken pieces of wood. And then we had to inspect the boat. This one too. Trent, can you reach that bit? Because there's hardly anything holding it on. It's split where the nails are. I think the noise was probably it breaking though. I just could have absorbed the impact. She's got the dead off it. I 
think it's a glue. It's just good. We had a quick look, um, got the hose because the, the deck, it just gets dirty being at a shipyard. Seems okay, we just want to check again when it's dry and then check the cross beam and the compression post, make sure they're fine. This shelter was built by Powerboats last year and it is the biggest shelter and most complex shelter they've ever done. We have platforms, we have a multi-stage roof, like it was... It took them a few weeks to get it done. And when they build these shelters, they warranty them for a hurricane season, basically. And we're going into our second now. Last year, the shelter held up really well. We didn't have anything happen like this. I guess the frustrating thing is that we did ask for the shelter to be checked and anything redone that needed to be redone. But I guess with the issues surrounding the previous contractor's departure that sort of got lost and then the rains happened and this has happened so during the week we'll just talk to the yard and we'll talk to leopard catamarans about having it fixed up because we're definitely not done with the shelter yet and we'll go from there i'm not gonna lie when i heard that bang <laughs> uh yeah, I can't really think of a nice way to describe it, to be honest. The rain seems to be easing off for now, but looking at the sky, I think that's not the end of it, so that's all right. Might just do a quick check of the platforms, though, to see if anything got wet that doesn't need to be wet. That there is another bulge. It's already leaking, so I think I might just go put a hole in it. We'll see about that. I try. Boom! Straight up and dropping down behind the platform. That could be a problem next time it's windy. Me and my crusty knife going back inside. Looking down the platforms, it seems okay. The rain's super light now, which makes it actually makes it really pretty up on the side of the mountains here. You have a look. I think it's quite pretty when it fogs up like that. Go and have a look downstairs. And the floor is wet. The floor is wet, but uh, I think we're okay too. We're pretty defensive down here though. So things are kept on pallets and whatnot down here, so quite defensive in general. Let's get a super bend in it. Oh wow. That that has literally just uh snapped that piece of wood. Look up here, you can see where one of the missing beams is from. Did you hear thunder? Yeah. Oh. I think it was thunder because it's somebody starting their boat. You've had enough drama for this afternoon? Yeah. Something we have got into the habit of doing, um, going back quite a while now, like to Europe at least, is as soon as we hear thunder, if we are in a shipyard, because this is our third shipyard stay with this boat, if we're in a shipyard, the shore power plug comes out. We're not even charging during the day, we, we charge overnight, but just to be absolutely certain that we are not gonna get a power surge or something that could damage our electrical, we unplug the boat. So that's what Tynan was doing. It's pretty much whoever hears the thunder and moves first, they go and do it, so. So we have unplugged it here. 
We've also unplugged it down there at the box. And that just ensures that if there's some kind of problem with the mains power, it's not going to affect us. So you are out of here. Oop, 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 oop. You're looking very serious. You're also going to spend your afternoon doing your favorite thing. Oh, I'm Leopard Catamaran Man. Doo -doo 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 -doo. I'm taking the Leopard Mobile. The car. And going across to the other new Leopard. Because there is water coming in. Hey, 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 hey. It's a Leopard. Much like submarines, this is not desirable. No, Leopards come with a water feature, don't you know anything? Yes. Da -da, da -da. You should have your leopard flag cape on. Oh, that's my mobile phone. Da -da, da -da. Have fun! I'll have your head go with the fucking leopard flag on like a cape. <laughs> <laughs> we actually do have a, a big leopard catamaran's flag. Yeah, I think that when Trent goes to rescue another leopard from now on, he should have to wear his leopard catamaran's cape. Storm. So what have we been up to this week other than the shelter breaking? Well, the answer to that is mostly logistics. Things like meetings, emails, phone calls, working with Leopard to try and create a solid plan for what the next phase of Liger's repairs are going to look like. Because it's now been four weeks since the previous contractors left and we still don't know who's going to be coming out when, if the outstanding bills that we've sent in are going to be reimbursed. So there's still quite a lot that hasn't been finalized. Hopefully by next weekend though, we will have an update because as I'm sure you can imagine, it is a little frustrating to be stuck in limbo for a month and still not have a solid plan for how things are going to proceed going forward. One thing we did get done though was installing some backing plates on our engine hatches so I'll show you that. Going to our engine bay one of the issues we had was cracks forming around where the hinges are. So just doing some work rebedding the engine hatch because I had some leaks and the entire the entire backside is all cracked. Basically the whole way across from here, all the way across the top, all the way through these hinges. We thought the smart thing to do was to try and prevent the cracking from happening again in future by adding some stainless steel backing plates because these should provide enough support that the articulation of the hinges isn't putting undue force on the bolts, which originally had very, very tiny washers on them. I don't really know what happened with this. The idea was put to the contractor. They said that Leopard said no, but we don't know if that was actually communicated to Leopard. Um, whatever happened there though, we went ahead and we just did it ourselves. So we sourced the materials, Trent got out his grinder, he cut them. The holes were drilled and this week Tynan installed them. And they did a really good job. These plates look OEM and they should prevent us from having further headaches from these lids cracking again. So that was a good preventative job that we were able to get done this week. The thing that gets me with the backing plates for the engine compartments is that when you look at the front of the boat where we have our generator locker, water locker and anchor locker, all of those are a similar sized hatch or much smaller in the case of the anchor locker. They have similar hinge styles, but they also have backing plates from the factory. So I would question why that was not done on the engine bays. The way we see it is when there's a warranty repair, you don't want to just fix the warranty issue. You want to address the root cause as well so it doesn't happen again. 
after having access to basic consumables for the past year through a shop card for the yard that was left at the boat. We question why Travelopia has now removed our access to this card until another contractor comes out when we never abused it and only used it to keep the job moving forward with the assumption that we had mutual goals. The previous contractor took almost all of the consumables from under the boat. We're not even sure who paid for or supplied them, if it was Leopard or Leopard's contractor, so won't comment yet. Considering that most of it likely would have gone to landfill because in my experience it is not economically viable to ship these kinds of things out of Trinidad, I do question this behaviour. We are still owed over 5,000 US dollars for consumables that we had to buy ourselves. Trent has been told that they are looking at these invoices as well as deciding on more than 17,000 US dollars worth of warranty work hours we contributed to the works that are unpaid. Personally, I think that they should have been looking at these invoices from the time of submission, which for some of these invoices was over two months ago. Hopefully I don't need to go through and vlog everything these consumables were used for just so that certain people will go and complain about the brand being devalued so that then they do the right thing. We now have to spend our own money on consumables which I don't think is right or very nice. That said, we are still waiting enthusiastically for a positive response from Robertson and Kane for their commitment to pay Travelopia for whatever percentage of our warranty repairs they feel they might have contributed to, possibly most of them. Trent was told on Friday in a text, as in Friday two days ago, that a new contractor has been organised to fly in pending the arrival of materials and items needed to complete the job. But considering previous shipping times and our current lack of any tracking numbers, we can't actually give you a timeline for when this will happen, so we're still very much in limbo. That said, I am very excited to have contributed my part to helping Travelopia organise some labour who could fly out here and start work as early as Tuesday next week if they authorise him. This person has previously done extensive work on the hulls and we look forward to his return and his positive attitude. Next week, I don't really know what we're going to be up to yet, but we will see what happens.